Lord is good and all the time. Allow me to take this opportunity to welcome each one of us, those who are watching online, those who are here, so that we can be able to fellowship from the word of the Lord together. Our sermon uh, this morning is entitled, How Much More? From the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. And I'll read the scripture. It says, since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Paul states that the greatest proof of the love of God is his plan of salvation. The one assurance beyond that is the direct witness of the Holy Spirit himself. The Holy Spirit bears witness that we as Christians are indeed God's children. In Romans 5, 9 to 10, Paul discusses being justified by God. He uses the phrase, how much more? Christ has already died, which means that his people no longer have to face God's wrath. Also, much more, Christ gave the gift of the Holy Spirit as well. Paul discusses justification and how the cross procures this justification on the Christian's behalf. It is not human's work, faith, or self-sanctification that justifies. It is purely the work of Christ on the cross. This act guarantees final salvation when Christ comes to receive his church and his people are with him or to be with him in glory. Now may I propose that God has done much more to us through Jesus Christ, and this means that we need to appreciate and experience the abundance life that is ours in the much more that God the Father has given us through Christ. Welcome now as we consider the much more about our status in order to be able to appreciate and believe the much more that God has accomplished for us through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, the much more of the humanity. As human beings, by the fact that we are an offspring of Adam, we are sinners and enemies of God, and we are under the wrath of God. We are enemies of God's creation, which has resulted in the destruction of our ecosystem, and we are now currently reaping the fruits of destroying our own environment. We are having extreme weather patterns, leaving behind destruction of properties and death, and at the climax of it, when God's final wrath come upon this world, there will be no sun, moon and stars, and a time of trouble will begin which has never been experienced. This is an outcome of our much more. Apart from being enemies of God and enemies of the creation, we are also enemies of each other. The social fabric is being destroyed at a very high rate. There is more abuse of wives, children, husbands, animals, name it. And what about the tortures and murders and suicides due to stress and depression? And now the worst of it all is when I become an enemy of myself and you become an enemy of yourself. People no longer value who they are and because of the difficult times we are living in, there is a lot of stress, depression, sickness, and even committing suicide now, now more than any other time. That is our much more as humanity. 
Now let us examine now the genesis of much more from our God. Now Paul begins in chapter 5 verse 9 by saying, we are reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. This means all things belong to God, who reconciled to himself through Jesus Christ and gave to us the ministry of reconciliation. Now this ministry of recon reconciliation is there so that we can bring souls to Christ, nurture them, and mature them in Christ. Namely, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not reckoning to them their trespasses, and having committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now on the cross, something happened very special. We all know there was those three hours when it was very dark. This is what Paul is referring in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 19, that God came there on the cross. And on the cross, he was reconciling the world to himself, putting all the sins of the world on Christ and accepting the sacrifice of Jesus Christ so that he does not recon our sins upon us. And because of that, he has committed to us that word of reconciliation. Number two, this genesis of the much more is that we are now justified by Christ's blood. And now allow me to ask, why the blood of Jesus Christ? The wages of sin is what? It's death, real death, which is separation from God forever. What we now call death is nothing but sleep, according to the word of God. And we usually practice how we will sleep in that tomb, three by six, every time we go to bed, every evening. And it is only the blood of Christ which has eternal life and righteousness, and such it qualifies to justify our past sins, present and even the future sins. And what is required of you and me? We all need to believe, all what we need is to believe what God did, what God is doing, and will forever continue to do for us because of Jesus Christ. But how did the blood of Christ acquire eternity? Because if the wages of sin is eternal death, then the blood must have eternal value so that it can be able to justify all of us. Then how did this blood of Jesus acquire eternal value so that it is able now to reconcile, to justify all of us? Number one, we all know that he was born through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God, eternal God. And uh, from the beginning of inception or his birth, through the power of the Holy Spirit, he was not like you and me. Although we all know he was a human being 100%, because he was conceived by Mary, but by being born by the eternal Holy Spirit, his blood had that eternity in it. And when he was dying, he offered himself through the eternal Spirit without a blemish, making his blood to have eternity in it. Hebrews 9, 14 says that he offered himself through the eternal spirit. And therefore, because of offering himself by the power of the Holy Spirit and by being born by the power of the Holy Spirit, then the blood acquired eternal life. And therefore, his blood is not like just any other blood. That is why Peter will say that the blood of Jesus Christ is more precious 
than Kenya shillings, than the dollar, than euro, than silver and gold. We are not redeemed with the perishable things. We are not justified with things which you come to an end like silver on, and gold. But we are redeemed. We are justified by the blood of Jesus Christ, which is more precious than gold and silver. And that is why it is able to go where the sin started in Eden and justify all those who died under the Old Testament dispensation, and it comes and finds you and me here two th over 2,000 years after it was shed on the cross and justifies you and me and those who will be born tomorrow, it will find them and also justify them because it has eternity in it. Friends, Jesus Christ has done much more. How powerful is this blood so that it is able to justify to go all the way from where sin started and join the time and eternity and come and find us here and it will go all the way until it gets us into eternity. How powerful it is. So powerful. And I want you to meet the power of this blood during the time of Christ's resurrection. Many of us think that Jesus just resurrected. Jesus did not just resurrect. The word of the Lord is very clear on this, that God the Father used the blood of Jesus Christ because it has eternity in it. He used, he used it to bring the chief shepherd out of the grave. I know this sounds funny, but if you read in Hebrews 13, 20, says, Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. So what brought Christ from the grave? The Bible says God the Father used the blood of the everlasting covenant to bring Christ out of the grave. So the blood is so powerful. The Father administered the blood on the tomb and Jesus came out. And when he came out, he took that blood. And you see the power of that blood in the heavenly gates. When he reached the heavenly gates, the angels asked, who is out there? And how can he be allowed to get in? And when he presented his blood, the gates of heaven opened and he was ushered in. And then from there, meet the power of that blood in the heavenly sanctuary. The Bible says, he doesn't minister in the heavenly sanctuary with the blood of animals, but he ministers in the heavenly sanctuary using his own blood. It is powerful blood. It is not like the blood of animals. When it is shed, it dries up. The blood of Jesus Christ never dried up. It is still fresh, and it is able to do much more than what the human mind can be able to imagine. Allow me to begin from where the power was displayed on the tomb. That Sunday bright morning means what to all of us who are justified? That there is no place where the devil can put you, where the devil can lock you in, put whatever he wants to put in, the blood of Jesus Christ cannot remove you. It has power. If it removed Jesus, out of the grave, it brought Christ out of the grave. It is able to open all the doors so that we can be able to come out and experience this justification and experience this reconciliation. Because of that blood, we have an open door to heaven. You don't need to go through any person. 
Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, the heavenly sanctuary is opened. We can approach the throne of God any time without going through any person. Praise the Lord. And you know, we need to get this right. There are so many people who are being wooed by these miracles which are happening there and there, and we will go there and there. I want you to know, those who are justified by the blood appreciate the power of the blood, and they know that they can go to the Father through the blood of Jesus Christ without going through anyone else. In fact, the word of the Lord says, the climax of the new covenant, and this new covenant is there because of the blood of Jesus Christ, is when we will reach a point where we will not teach one another because all of us will be knowing the Lord. And when that time comes, we will wake up out of these pews and go out there and declare the good news, and then our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will come again. And now, the much more. <clears throat> Paul says, now that we have been reconciled, we have been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. He says, Number one, we are not under God's wrath. And therefore, in addition to the reconciliation and the justification by the blood of Jesus Christ, there is much more. First, we need to know we are not under God's wrath. Having been reconciled and justified, God is very happy with you. God is happy with us. Tell your partner, God is happy with you. And you know, I don't know whether you know what that means. You know, when God is happy with us, and he's not happy with us because of what we do, he's happy with us because of what Christ has done. Reconciling us and justifying us. Now, when he's happy with us, it means... He wants you and me to delight ourselves in him. And when we delight ourselves in him, in return, he will give us all the desires of our hearts. The reason why we are lacking in so many areas, it's because we always view God as a God who is furious with us. God who is watching to catch us up, I want us to know in this much more, having been reconciled, having been justified, we are not under God's wrath. God is happy with us and he wants us to delight ourselves in him. And as we do that, he will grant us the desires of our hearts. But why are we not happy? Because we are looking for joy where we cannot find it. True joy is not found in what is seen. People want, people think that joy is found in what is seen. Some think if I wear a new suit, I will feel good. Yes, you can feel good for a moment, but you cannot feel good forever. Yes, people think if I drive a new car, I will feel good. If I have a new house, feel good. I came to realize in this life, I'm not very old, but I came to realize in this life, even those things which excite us, these things which are seen, they excite us just for a moment. But I want you to know, when we understand we are not under God's wrath, we will appreciate that true joy is not in what is seen, but it is in the one who is not seen, our Father in heaven, and in what he has given us that is not seen. Now, the moment, you know, I listened to the 
children's sermon. The moment you focus your mind on heavenly things, and uh, you remove your things on what is seen, because these things which are seen are very temporary, what will happen? You will start having a spontaneous joy, because you know you have more than what people can see. Hallelujah. Yes, you have eternal life. You have eternal home. You, you have what people cannot understand. We are now in God's dispensation of grace in which there is true joy, peace, and love. And in this dispensation, we have joy that cannot be affected by what is seen because with the unseen eyes, we see what is our spiritual, what is ours in the spiritual realm. Hello? And uh, when you see it, we don't even just see it. The reason why we are not happy is because we imagine and see and understand, but we don't pronounce it. We want us to know there is power in speaking. Hello? There is power in what? In speaking. And you eat what you speak. I don't know whether you know that. You eat what you speak. What we speak is what becomes of us, is what we experience. Now this wise man said this, a man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth. That's Proverbs 13, 2. A man shall eat well from the fruit of his what? Now, the moment you understand the much more that in this dispensation, God has called us for joy. Speak of that joy. Even when things seem not to be so in this world. Because the true joy is not an outcome of what we see. It is an outcome of what we don't see. And we must believe in this what we don't see, speak of it until we start eating the fruits of it in this life. And that is why the Bible is very clear. It says the only way to overcome the current status is through the blood of Jesus Christ and the word of our testimony. The blood has already brought reconciliation between us and God. Through that blood, we are already justified. Now we need the practical aspect of it. And in order for us to have it the way it's supposed to be, the word of our testimony. When the devil tells you, all is not well, Tell him it is well in Jesus Christ. When he tells you you will die the next minute, tell you I am alive in Jesus Christ. When he tells you things are becoming hard, tell him my God is a God of impossibilities. Eat well from the fruit of your mouth. Yes, in this dispensation, we also experience peace. Peace which passes human understanding because our consciences no longer judge us. One of the things which makes people to experience turmoil in their lives is because of their consciences being judged. But when we know we have been justified, we have been re reconciled, now much more than we have peace with God, and therefore we are no longer under judgment. We are justified and washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And this means we will not be angry with anyone. We will not hate anyone because the love of God has been poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And now, the much more again. 
Paul says, apart from that, he says, we, are, we will be saved through Christ's life. That's verse 10. Now, allow me to say this. No matter how much we are blessed in this life, we cannot be comfortable in this world. It doesn't matter how much I have, how much you have, our bodies always will cry for deliverance, for salvation, for being taken out of this world. And the reason is very simple. We are all aware that the world is full of bad things. The devil is not sleeping, planning how to finish us with the diseases, with problems in our families, and uh, difficult times. And therefore, we cannot be home in this life. And because of that, Paul says in verse 10, we will be saved through Christ's life. And therefore, through Christ's life, we will be delivered in a dramatic manner. We will be delivered in a dramatic manner when all these things comes to an end. And it is it is not taking long. I know we know so much. We will sing Huruma Zababa in English if it's Let the Lower Light Be Burning, which will be projected on the screen. Let 
Thank you so much. Uh, we want to continue from there, and uh, we had to take a small break uh, because of some logistic problems. Now we can continue. I said, we are saved through Christ's life, and no matter how much we are blessed in this life, we cannot be comfortable in this world that is full of bad things where the evil one is planning many things against God's people. And therefore, through Christ's life, we'll be delivered in a dramatic manner when all this comes to an end. One of the rescue missions which is best known by almost the whole world is when uh, the Israelites rescued their people in Uganda during the time of Id Amin. I want us to know our rescue, our deliverance will be more dramatic than that. And therefore, again, much more. We are saved through Christ's life. In his life, there is hope for the future. This world is not our home. We are strangers, and therefore we are passing by. What we see by faith will become a reality when Jesus comes again. We shall be saved through his life. And when we talk of his life, I want us to appreciate we have uh, his life in two, maybe stages. The first life is when he came on this world. His life on earth brings all things which we are talking about now. Reconciliation, justification, and more and above that, it also gives us or comes to us with whatever we need on daily basis. He's the one who provides. If it were not of his grace, none of us can be able to survive. Even the bad people who are out there who are surviving, it is because of God's grace. We need to know when we talk of grace. There is a common grace. And in the common grace, God blesses everyone. This is so amazing. That is why his son will rise to the good and evil. And when the rain rains, it will rain to the chamber of the one who is good and even to the one who is evil. Therefore, in the common grace, God has blessed all of us. But there is now the saving grace. And because we have accepted this saving grace, we are reconciled with God and justified and uh, justified, we shall be saved through his life. And his life on earth will save us by declaring us before the Father that we are righteous forever. And his resurrected life will save us and grant us glorious life with eternal glorious bodies, bringing to an end all the sufferings of this life. And therefore, in the life which he lived in this world, there is all what you need to live in this world. But in many cases, we don't understand this. Allow me to quote him. In John 10:10, 10, 10, he said, The thief does not come except to steal, to destroy, and to kill. That is the mission of the devil. The mission of the devil in this life is to steal. And he has stolen many of us, our minds, our money, and everything. And then after that, you destroy us in putting us in many things, making our minds to stick to the things which are seen instead of thinking and sticking to the things which are not seen. 
And when he has done all this, he begins with killing people spiritually. And when he has destroyed people spiritually, he will then kill them physically. But the same verse says, But I came so that they may have life and have it abundantly. So in his life, we have an abundant life. Praise the Lord. And this abundant life encompasses all the aspects of our lives. You see, many times we limit the abundant life to the spiritual realm only. The abundant life that Christ came to bring to us. And that is why there is reconciliation and justification is encompassing all the aspects of our lives. And the, the disciples of Jesus would understand this better. And I want to quote one, and this is John who is writing this. When he was writing to Gaius in John 3, 2, he says, I, I, I also wish or pray that you prosper. Physically, the way your soul is prospering. So prosperity in the abundant life doesn't have to do with the spirit and soul alone. It has to do even with our bodies, with our minds, with our social life, with our finances, everything. Uh, you'll say, how is this possible? We need to believe. That's where I began, that we need to believe in reconciliation and in justification through the blood of Jesus Christ, God is doing more and we will continue to do much more if only we believe. And what does this mean? In his life on this earth, it means that when we have any physical challenges, we only need to go to him. Hallelujah. We only need to go to who? To him. And appreciate that what he was able to do when he was on this earth, healing, you know, exorcising demons and all that, he's even able to do it right now. Because he's the Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals all manner of what? Of disease. By the way, we, we need to know that the reason why we get healed even when we take medicine is because of the little faith we have. It's not about the medicine. The medicine are there. But if the medicine were, could heal, nobody would die. True or false. But why do we die even when we are in the best hospitals? Losing hope. So we need to have faith in what God has done, is ready to do for us in Christ Jesus. Mentally, so many people are disturbed. Dr. Bruce Lipton says that 95% of ailments are related with the mind and the spirit. And if they are related with the mind and the spirit, then what we need now is someone who is above all those things. And may I tell you, that person is Jesus Christ. And that is why he came to give us abundant what? abundant life, much more. And therefore, at mental level, he is the prince of peace. And therefore, the moment we appreciate him, we experience this peace which passes human understanding despite the challenges we are going through because we know whatever is happening is just for a moment. And even in our social life, we need to know that he is there as the head of our families. And when he is there as the head of our families and we appreciate him, allow him to be in, we will not die because of stress. No one, I'll be talking this in the afternoon. The secret, the three L's, living long life, the secret of it. And I'll be examining just one commandment in the Ten Commandments. But in order to be able to get there, we need to understand when God has been allowed to come in, as a parent, when you have done your best, all you could do, you will not allow yourself to be depressed by a son or a daughter who have become rebellious and you have done all what you could do. 
Are you getting me? You will appreciate that what the word of the Lord says is true. You did it, you live it, they will not live the way. And if they live the way, God knows more about that. And therefore, in his life, we are blessed. We have abundant life. And that is why John will pray for Gaius to prosper not only in the soul, but also in his mind and body and in his resurrected life. I am now, I don't know how I can explain this, but the climax of all this is when Jesus will come again. And we will have a glorious body, a body that is not limited like the bodies which we have, bodies which will never become sick again, we will never cry again, and all these things will come to an end. And therefore, whatever the challenge you are going through, I want you to know, because of the much more, it is only temporary. It will not last forever. The Bible is very clear. The weeping may endure for a night, but eternal joy comes in the morning. Therefore, we are in that night when there are so many challenges, but eternal joy is coming when Jesus will come again. Having been reconciled, having been justified, there is now much more. We are not under God's wrath. God is happy with us. Let us delight ourselves in the Lord and he will continue to give us the desires of our hearts. Oh yes, there is much more. We shall be saved through his life. And by the life he lived in this world, we have abundant life. And by the life of his resurrection, we have hope of eternal life, of a glorious life. And therefore, we can be able to counteract all these things by believing and speaking what God has done for us, is doing for us, and will do for us. Oh yes, there is much more in Jesus Christ. And I want that much more. I don't know how many this morning want to say, I need that much more in Jesus Christ. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for what you have done. We need the much more in Christ. Thank you for the reconciliation. Thank you for the justification through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you because our Father, you are happy with us. May your grace help us to experience this much more as we delight ourselves in you. Thank you for the salvation in your life. And thank you even for the future deliverance when you will come again. May the much more be our experience now as we serve you in this life and as we wait for your soon return. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.